Alrighty, here we are in the Common Application. I'm recording this on August 1st. The Common App is here. The new Common App is here. So you go to commonapp.org, you sign in, your first year students. I have all sorts of stuff saved in here because I record these videos annually, like Groundhog Day. Uh, so you won't get a welcome back, but you will be asked to register. You want to make sure that you're checking the right box because they give you all these different, sorry, circular uh, circles. And if you are graduating uh, in 2025, that means you are starting college technically in 2025, right? Because you graduate in June 25, and then you start college in 25. Um, I miss, yeah, th this is something you won't see also because um, you haven't already done the Common App. So I am going to not keep all my colleges. Uh, it's going to ask me all this BS stuff. And I'm going to get right into the Common Application. Okay. So let's take a look at this thing together. All right. So one of the first things you should do is, really, you know, really just register and follow the prompts and all that. Um, you might have a different screen here because, again, this is new to me, not uh, new to you, not to me. The actual common application is here. So I've got some pre-populated stuff here. But when people talk about the common application, it's this third tab. Common app. Profile, family education, testing, activities, writing. So this is all pretty basic information. There is nothing interesting at all to um, to comment on testing, you know, whether you are submitting your SATs or not, or ACTs or not, or subject tests, or IB, this is where you do all that. And that's a school by school, case by case answer. Activities, this is, oh, I guess this was saved. Okay, so this is a um, an important section. T to me, the three most important parts are, are time-consuming and intellectually challenging parts of the common application are not in these first four sections, but the activities, I'd say that's number three. Number two is the writing section, which is the actual prompts. You pick one uh, and, and plug it in that for the personal statement. And then the first most important section, which we can't see yet, are the supplemental essays. So in terms of activities, I've said this uh, ad nauseum, I'll just say it again. You want to report your activities in a way that advocates for you. Okay? So I didn't really do such a good job in this here because I prefer to do that one-on-one. -on -one. But you'll see it asks you what is the activity type, and you've got all sorts of stuff. You even have, I think, uh, cultural, career-oriented. So anything that's in or out of school that's not you sitting in class is fair game here. School spirit, I guess that could be cheerleading, work, paid, other club or activity. And if you take care of an elderly uh, parent or grandparent, you know that, that could go in here too. All right, then in this case, the drop downs are for sports. So I went with badminton because I don't know if I've ever played badminton. Then it asks you for your position, what your position. Then it asks you the name. Somehow I infiltrated Syosset there. And then this is important describe the activity, including what you accomplished and any recognition you, ex you received. So what some kids do is they'll say, oh, the Syosset High School boys badminton team is a club that f competes against other high schools. And, okay, that's not how you answer it. What you answer is your role, not what the activity is, right? Not what, not what the organization is, I should say. So I was captain. I led unofficial practices. I inspired the other um, team members to the best of my ability. And we competed against other schools. 150 characters, max. And then what grades did you do it in? I took off 11th, bad shoulder that year. Uh, that was during the school year. I don't go all year round. Badminton never sleeps. Hours per week, weeks per year, you average that. And 10 to 
participate in some activity? I would say more than often than not, you want to say yes, particularly if it's some sort of community service thing like this. All right. So I don't want to take up too much time on this section, but I just want to I just want to walk you through that so you understand the importance of it. All right. So now let, let's get back to one other thing here that I, I kind of glossed over in the education section. You have um, this is where you list a bunch of academic stuff. Pretty boring. Most schools will want this. What are you taking first half of senior year? And then honors. Do you wish to report any honors, right? So this is where you put things like National Honor Society, but these are academic achievements. So if it's musical or athletic or art related or performing arts, that does not go here. Uh, pet peeve, it's National Honor Society, singular, not honors society. If you make that mistake, that's okay. You're plenty of company. Community-based organizations, Lockwood College Prep is not a community-based organization. It's just for the record. Feature plans. I don't know how much this really matters, but if you have feature plans that you want to state here, put them in. All right. So I want to get to how you load up colleges, and then I want to get to the supplemental essays. So you go right here. It tells you. If you have nothing in colleges, go to college search. So I'm going to stick in Boston College. And I'm going to click add. Okay. Now I'm going back to the common app. Oh, that was dumb. Now I'm going back to the dashboard. Okay. So let me take you through stuff that gets overlooked all the time here. Number one, add your admission plan. I'm going to start fall of 25. I'm going to go early decision, but I could also do ED2 or regular decision. I'm going ED. Okay. This is controversial. If you're accepted under an early decision plan, you must promptly, undefined, withdraw the applications submitted to other colleges and universities and make no additional applications to any university in any country. If you are an early decision candidate and are seeking financial aid, you need not withdraw other applications until you, ha you have received notification about financial aid from the admitting early decision institution. So that's just boilerplate, but it pertains to BC and any other school on the common application. Now, the other thing that you should know is that in the actual early decision agreement, which is not here, as far as I can tell, um, it'll tell you that if you don't get adequate financial aid, you can get out. Right. Um, yeah, this is this is a scare tactic. Institution may share my name and my early agreement with other institutions. Right. I've read and understood my rights and responsibilities under the early decision process. Well, that's not here. So anyway, I don't think that's here. So I'll to be determined. And then there's stuff about submitting your scores. Where do you want to live on campus? Um, will you be sending official results from the testing agency? I would say yes. So even if you self-report, I would say yes. Okay, this is stuff I don't think is worth discussing. Have you been convicted of a felony? Well, huh, that's... No, I'm kidding. Um, by the way, an arrest is different than a conviction. Keep that in mind. Okay, so now let's go back to the dashboard. Um... Click on Boston College, writing requirements, supplement, uh, college questions. Boston College requires a short response essay as part of our review process. Yet, Boston College does not use a writing supplement for any additional writing requirements. So that's dumb. I mean, that's a 400-word response is a writing supplement. Anyway, number one, if a college tells you that's optional, that means mandatory. And number two, you might have to hunt around and gather that information. So if you're on the common the basic common application, this goes to every college. It's not specific to BC or any other school. Going back to my colleges and Boston College, go into questions, and that's where we just were. There's academic stuff. 
asking you where you want to apply. I'm going to say the business school, select my intended major. I'll say accountant because I would be a terrible accountant. Optional interest in a pre-professional program. I'll go pre-vet because a lot of people don't know of the, the, <laughs> the overlap of accounting and veterinarian. All right. So um, activities, that's taking us back. Oops. Back to um, this part of the page, which allows you to highlight additional activities. You may upload a brief resume. Brief doesn't necessarily mean one page. Okay. Contacts, who cares? Family. This is where they're trying to pick up whether you're a legacy. That's important to Boston College. Parent information, etc. Writing. We'd like to get a better sense of you. Please respond to one of the following prompts, right? Remember, they don't have a writing supplement yet. They have prompts and a 400 word limit, right? So you, you pick one and you write it up. So here's what I think you should do for all of your essays, okay? So let's say that you've looked at the these ones and you are interested this one is the one you like the most okay so what i would do is i would make a separate google doc called supplemental essays i'm so good at typing and i would just list them all out by deadline. And we know that's November 1 because you're applying early, we're applying early decision. And we know it's a 400 word limit. And I'm just going to cut and paste that in here. All right. By the way, let me just double check on November 1. Yeah, here we go. Here are the deadlines. All right. Now, final comment here now that we've hit the 12 minute mark. Other deadline uh, information. They'll consider you for scholarships as long as it's submitted by November 1. But what about financial aid? That's not anywhere here. When is that due? Maybe if you click on the financial aid arrow or, or link, we'll figure it out. So here's their mission statement. I know that's very helpful. Let's go on undergraduate financial aid. They give you some nice definitions, but no deadlines. That's pretty annoying. How aid works. Let's go to applying for aid. How to apply for aid. Prospective students. Here we go. ED1 deadline, ED2 deadline, and regular deadlines. So November 1 also happens to be the deadline for admissions as well as for financial aid. I would, I would do a, a separate document for your financial aid deadlines. Of course, that's something we're helping you with if we're taking care of your financial aid applications. Um, if you have any questions about this stuff, you can just email us, VIP at LockwoodCollegePrep.com. That's going to conclude my incomplete overview of the Common App because this is really boring. Um, but there is more detail here. Don't don't skip over stuff that I'm skipping over. Because you want to get a handle on everything so you don't have last minute surprises. We don't like October surprises in elections or in uh, the college application process. You've got to get a handle on all of your dates, your admissions, you know, application dates, as well as your financial aid application dates. I would block out time this month in August to do that. I'm going to sign off here. I hope you found this helpful. It's been my pleasure to bring you this information.